Hi handsome and welcome to my 33rd video, also welcome to pain. This is the life skill only a region locked Iron Man, where I can't use the center market, I can't use the cash shop and I am stuck in Balanos until I do everything it has to offer. In this first official episode we have a single goal, we need to build a bet. The bet is crucial here since it will let us recover energy if and when we need it. And it also is one of the requirements to escape Balanos, as it is furniture with Velia in the name. But getting a bet is not as easy as it may seem. But let's start at the beginning. Our one and possibly only character for this entire journey is going to be the Shy. I was considering other classes as well for the meme, but getting combat levels would be impossible without the Shy passive. Or at least it would take way too long. With the Shy created and the tutorial behind us, we are starting in the ancient stone chamber and making Balanos our home for the time being. Now, there is one rule that I need to explain a little bit more, and that is the no grinding rule. This is not a pacifist run, so I am allowed to kill monsters, both the ones that I can gather and the ones I can't. This is for two reasons. First, some quests do require us to kill mobs, so I had to choose between one rule or the other and I do think that killing monsters and especially bosses later on would be a fun thing to watch and hopefully fun way to play the game as well. Second, these mobs hold a lot of knowledge and knowledge means energy. Now I could play the game without this energy but it would not make the game harder, it would not make the challenge harder, it would just make it more tedious. To make it fair, I will not be picking up any loot from these monsters and I will not be using pets either, it's just in case they would pick it instead of me. With that out of the way, we can skip all of the MSQ part and get to Velia, which is where I realized two things. I am getting energy from the quests and I don't have any tools. I will just let my Twitch self show you my first impressions of this information. To buy some tools. Wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, what? Now wait a fucking second, okay? What do you mean I need a million and a half? How the fuck do I get that money? Now, I know that you don't need the tools to gather anymore, but does it make sense to you? Gathering blood with bare hands? Chopping trees Minecraft style? No, that's not how it's going to be here. We need those tools. No cheating. Oh, and if you are saying, well, that's not a problem. You can just use the gold bars from the MSQ you got and get the tools that way. Well, this is what happened to those bars. So we started with bare hand gathering and we gathered anything we could get our hands on. Fruit trees, olive trees, bushes, thickets. It was also around this point when I realized that I can't do side quests until level 20, which I was nowhere near reaching. This will become a problem very soon. Following our barehanded gathering session and a little bit of main questing, we got to another perceived softlock. This part of the main quest requires you to get the blood of a weasel. I found out an hour later that you don't actually need the fluid collector for this quest and that the blood is just a drop from the weasels that you get when you kill the weasel. But I didn't know this at the time, so I went about getting the money for a fluid collector. It did not go well. Soon enough I ran out of energy and I had no idea what to do. But then I got one. One very, very terrible idea. I'm sorry for what you are about to witness. I'm sorry. <laughs> we are going on an adventure. Yeah. I did buy a raft. And after around 15 minutes, we made it to NG Island. Where, to my surprise and subsequent horror, I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do. You see, there are these flowers set around the Balanos Seas. These flowers are special, in the sense that they are considered to be trade goods. Which means 
that their price is higher than your regular gathering drop and they also give you training EXP. Now, I have no idea why, but for some reason, when I go to NG Island, I couldn't pick up these flowers. I saw them here. The game was giving me the interact cursor as you can see, but I could not gather them for whatever reason. The main goal was a complete failure. Following the row of shame, we went to Olvia to talk to more people, find Igor Bartali's evil brother and eventually reach level 20, which unlocked our side quests. Skip forward a couple of these quests later and around 3 hours and 40 minutes into the challenge and we were able to purchase our very first Logia tool, the pickaxe. This is partially because some quests are locked behind the pickaxe, but mostly because we can use rough stones in a refinery to get blackstone powder, which we will need for both trading crates, our money maker, and also to make black stones, which are otherwise very hard to get on the Iron Man. The following stretch is not that very interesting. We did some more questing around Balanos. 4 hours and 30 minutes into the challenge we got our Logia Gather clothes. Don't ask me why I bought them when they only give plus 3 life skill mastery. I am an Iron Man, not a clever man. After 5 hours and 10 minutes, we finally decided to go catch a horse. Now, I do realize that catching horses is by far the most profitable thing in this challenge, but I don't want to abuse this too much, I don't want to overdo the horses, so to ensure that I won't just catch horses to make them into salami, I will try to always sell horses after I have at least bred them. That way they can at least enjoy life a little bit before getting thrown into the glue machine. Shortly after we got a horse, we also purchased the Logia X, which I have decided to buy next since it does unlock a lot of quests as well in and around Velia and it is also the tool that will get us the materials needed to make furniture, including the bed. We also finished the Balanos storyline and with that we were free to do as we pleased. And at around the 6 hour mark we got our Logia hoe as well. We took a trip to Ilya Island on the Griffin to do some more quests there and after I came back from the Ilya vacation I went about obtaining the materials needed for the bed. At this point I was still oblivious to what was about to come, so I just went to gather some ash, timber and made some copper and tin. We handed the blush leaves obtained through farming to Liana in exchange for some contribution and farming EXP and we placed two more fences to farm in. We then went around gathering diorite next to the western guard camp and after we got all the necessary ingredients, we decided to get a bed, only to find out that I truly am a BDO player, so my reading comprehension is non-existent and we need sturdy ash plywood, not just ash plywood. This means that we need plywood hardener. Now, my streaming self said that it's not that hard getting plywood hardener. Oh boy, if only he knew. Disappointed, but not deterred, we persevered onwards. We completed our Logia tool collection, did some more quests around Velia and also the daily quest in Olvia, and then found the progression tab, where we siphoned all of the Kafra stones to sell for 300,000 silver each. Don't worry, I see the 100 million gold bars down there, but I decided not to take them just yet. We used the Kafra's funds to buy Logia accessories and with the almost complete equipment wheel, only missing the artifacts, we decided that it's time to start upgrading. The problem here is that it's not exactly easy to upgrade our gear and that is for a very simple reason. Black stones. Getting them without grinding is a little complicated. You can get them from farming if you catch a mole in your garden, you can get them as a random drop in alchemy, you can refine rough stones into them, or you can do what we are going to do. Grind sharp black crystal shards. To be able to do this, you need Apprentice 5 processing, which we will go about acquiring very soon, but not soon enough, as I ended day 1 by doing some more quests, getting more energy from the monster zones and making some of the furniture I was able to make. On day 2, we got super lucky with a Delosia crop that gave us an artifact and a mole on top. 
thanks to which we were able to upgrade our pickaxe to plus 7. We gathered powder of flames from copper veins in the coastal cave and combine them with timber and stone to make a bonfire. The bonfire gives you plus 1 energy recovery as long as you are standing right next to it. It is a little buggy and wonky but it's the best that we can do right now. So we did some more processing, we also hit Apprentice 5 and got to grinding our sharp crystal shards. Just for the record guys, do not do this at home, ok? Do not grind your sharp crystal shards. Never. We got our Logia close to plus 3 and our Logia X to plus 7. We repeated the Olvia dailies from the day before, hired some more workers in Olvia and did our Chuck Lorry hunting questline. Not much else to talk about here, just more quests. We hit professional gathering, then we did some more alchemy, more quests, more gathering, more processing and we got our Logia gathering gear to plus 8. We also got lucky on the Skamatu box and pulled 80 sharp crystal shards from it which means more black stones for us. And this means that we got to upgrade our tools even more. We also started making copper ore crates since there are a ton of copper nodes in Balanos and the crates will give us a small but stable income while also leveling our trading skill so we get some more money from more valuable crates in the future. During our gathering session we also discovered this cave in Balanos with a single imp who drops a Balanos treasure map piece. Keep this piece in mind for possible later episodes since I do want to know where this will lead. Following the discovery, we also got and planted 3 more fences to be able to get more farm crops and the rest of the day was kind of boring. The only thing that's worth mentioning here is that we got a wagon so I could train horses a bit better and faster. One thing that I did not mention in my teaser trailer of a video was that I want to keep AFK activities to a minimum. I definitely won't be doing any overnight AFK fishing or horse training since I do that on my main account. Let's move on to day 3. Day 3 started with a still bedless but not boatless for very long. We took another griffin ride to Ilya Island, finished all the quests we could get there and more importantly we found some opal deposits that we quickly mined away. Opal will be important much later on when we decide to make our own Manos gathering clothes but it's not a bad idea to stock up since we are already here. It was around this time when I realized just how hopeless my situation is. See, to make the bed we need 6 sturdy ash plywood. A single sturdy plywood needs 3 plywood hardeners and a single hardener needs 3 traces of nature in return. So worst case scenario, you need 54 traces of nature to craft a bed. There is a chance that we get multiple crafts of either the hardener or the plywood but even then it's still going to be at the very best case scenario at least half of that. Well, at least we got to further upgrade our Logia tools, this time it was the axe to plus 15 and pickaxe to pry using the handful of concentrated black stones that I have because these are even worse to get than the regular black stones. With the newly upgraded tools in hand, we got to the main portion of the day 3. We didn't do anything about the trace of nature problem, but we did make a rowboat that we named the Broad. Don't ask me why I thought it was funny. We did travel the entirety of the Balenos seas. You might already know this, but Balenos is not just the land since Elia Island is Balenos as well and so are many of the islands in the sea. To know which is which, we looked up Videolithics map and checked whose territory the islands were assigned with. If it was assigned to anything other than Balenos, the island was off limits. We also made a point to collect all of the flowers that serve as trade goods that I wanted to collect on day 1 that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Somehow they were able to be gathered now. I suppose it had something to do with either completing the MSQ in Balanos or more likely with the level of our character. I did mention them being better money than the regular items that we can find, but the difference is marginal, especially if we don't have connected nodes to these islands, which we obviously don't. The important parts are the trading levels that will make our trade crates from Olvia more profitable. And one of the islands closest to Valencia territory even has date palm trees which will help us get some palm timber which will be important in probably the next episode. So we discovered all the islands, talked to all the node and wharf managers, found some more opal and flowers along the way, discovered the hidden path to Atlantis that was guarded by these pirates 
who for some reason didn't leave us alone even when we were on the other side of the island, so we had to take them on. This was the hardest battle of my life. They say that BDO is an easy game, but have they ever tried fighting two Cox pirates with a level 1 boomerang while overweight in Logia gear? Yeah, I bet they have it. Casuals. Where was I? Oh yeah, after 4 hours and 10 minutes of going around the islands, we were finally back in our beloved Velia Warp, almost 20 energy richer as well. We also sold all of the flowers that we got to the trade manager. I wanted to barter for them, but was quickly shut down and we had to sell them for even less money. But it did still get us to apprentice for trading. We played some chess while doing alchemy, went to Olvia and upgraded our Logia hole to plus 13, and after some more meandering, we did the necessary quests in the progression pass to unlock our sturdy alchemy stone of life, which is going to be our primary and very likely our only alchemy stone for the foreseeable future. Getting our hands on a life spirit stone is very hard, so we are basically relegated to quests and events. Trian's steer is locked behind level 60 and Khan's heart, well, not only is Khan's heart locked behind Khan that you need to kill 3 weeks separate, but it's also in Margoria, so even if we found a guild that does Khan, I couldn't join them. This is the best that we can get. What is also great about this stone is that we don't need mystical spirit powder or anything special to recharge it either. Uh, all we need are either the pure powder or the clear liquid reagents. Things that we can quite easily make ourselves. On this day we also educated my viewers on the intricacies and beauty of the Czech language. It would, it would say like this, it would say cool, like this. And we upgraded our gear even higher. One thing I forgot to mention is that repairing gear is not exactly easy on the iron pan either. Every two failed taps are a million silver lost, since I need to go to Logia farm and buy the same tool or gear to repair them. So this enhancing session made me basically broke again. And that's how the day ended. Broke, bruised, beaten, bedless, but not defeated. It was before the stream on day 4 had even started that I figured out the recipe to success. That's right, it took me 4 days to figure out how to get a bed. And this is how you get those traces of nature as well. It is through Imperial Alchemy. Now, can you really blame me for not knowing the rewards for Imperial Alchemy? Well, at least we know our next step. And that is that we need to get the Imperial Boxes. The easiest boxes that we can make on this challenge right now are the Elixir of Will and the Elixir of Life. So that's what we are going to be making. 50 of the boxes means 600 total elixirs. After beating more of my viewers at chess, we got our 50 boxes, and I will just let this moment speak for itself. We got it! There it is! Take a screenshot everyone! Record this on YouTube, send this to your grandmother, let her know that Lunai BDO, sorry, Twitch.tv slash Lunai BDO got his first 50 traces of nature in this fucking video game. Trace of nature powders, yes! It only, it only took us, it only took us almost two days of playtime to get a fucking bed. To get a bed. With the biggest bottleneck out of the way, all we needed was to gather some ash timber and in the process we obtained enough sharps to get most of our Logia tools to pry. And uh, we ran out of energy with one sturdy plywood to go. Since I had nothing else to do but wait for energy, I just went to play on my main account for the day. Where I have another, way easier to explain and way more manageable challenge. You might already know it if you are a regular of this channel. It is the Iron 10 challenge. Where my only goal is to make 2 million of every single million in the game. You guys should check it out. It's like this one, but somehow less insane. With the pause for dramatic effect lasting an entire day, we returned to knock down some more trees, listed the bed for construction, goofed around for 30 minutes doing random stuff in the game, and then finally got a bed. And that means that this video is coming to an end. 
Now I will be real with you Hanson. Doing this challenge burned me out real bad. To the point where the promised one video per week that I alluded to in the trailer video is nothing more than a pipe dream. There also is the issue of feeling like I could just do the iron pan instead since that is where my heart is at the moment. So expect a new episode to come out when I get bored of the iron pan. Speaking of iron pan, the next video and possibly videos will be on that series since we are very close to finishing one meal and I'll let you guess which one that is. Alright handsome, hope you liked the video today, remember to like and subscribe, make sure to tell me how many mistakes I did in this challenge and enjoy your grind.